It is go time. It is time for another CCS Alumni Live. CCS Alumni Live is a weekly-ish series where I, Brandi Keeler, the Assistant Director of Admissions, talk to graduates from CCS about their journey from high school to career. And today we have an amazing guest from our photography department. I'm going to introduce our guests and then add them to the live so we can get started with today's conversation. So today we are talking with Patrick Daly, who is a 2009 photography graduate from CCS, and he's now a Portland, Oregon-based advertising and editorial photographer working in the sport and automotive industries. From his freelance work snapping fitness photos for Converse and Reebok to capturing the greatest moments from the MLB World Series, Pat has made it his life's work to do what he enjoys most, snapping awesome photos. In fact, his stunning photography skills have led him to work with clients like New Balance, Warrior Hockey, Volvo Trucks, Major League Baseball, and many, many, many more. Um, some names you probably recognize. So without further ado, I am going to add today's guest to live. Yay, 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 waiting for There he is. Here you go. Hey, Pat. I got this window up. I'm trying to see you. Sorry. Can you see me? Are you on your computer? No, I'm on my phone. Oh, okay. How's it going? Oh, oh, we lost Pat there. All right, let's try to see if we can get him back. There you go. All right, here we go. And we're live. <laughs> How you doing today, Patrick? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm excited to chat with you about your journey. Yeah, it's been a while. I'm uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been quite some time, which is the case. But that's why these are awesome. We get to catch up, and in the process, our students and and general audience who are tuning in get to learn about you and meet you. Uh, for those who are tuning in, and this is your first CCS Alumni Live, uh, the way this works is I'll ask Pat a few questions about his journey from high school to career. Um, then we'll open the floor up to answer some of your questions. So I know a few of you sent questions ahead of time. If you didn't get a chance to send questions ahead of time, make sure to click the little question box at the bottom as we go along, and I'll make sure uh, we get to ask Pat your questions. So um, yeah, let's get started. Pat, you've mm -hmm. been doing a lot of things. <laughs> Can you <Yeah>. give us <laughs> um, like the, the condensed version of what you've been up to since CCS, since there's so much that you've been up to? Yeah, that's... that's uh kind of a long road. I, I dabbled in uh, automotive right out of school. I had an opportunity to work at a, this uh, place called Gibbs, which was an amphibious car company. What does um, that mean? Which amphibious? is, uh, so, so they were designing ATVs that could go into the water, the wheels retract, and then it turns into a jet ski. So they were just these James Bond type vehicles. Um, it was owned by a, a guy in New Zealand who uh, just had He's like a billionaire who had money to say, this is my idea, let's do it. And uh, wow. so it was a uh, hundred people working out in Auburn Hills, um, designing these vehicles. And um, out of school, I w it was right during the middle of the recession. So mm -hmm. there, weren't, there weren't a ton of jobs um, at that time, especially in automotive work. And I had a chance to go and become a staff photographer there um, and do, some of it was creative. Some of it was testing footage where we, mm -hmm. You know, we attach cameras to the vehicle and run them through rigorous tests, drive them down super bumpy roads, all these different things. And, and you're just seeing if the vehicle is going to survive that. So it wasn't necessarily super creative, but I was still mm -hmm. using some of the technology that I had learned in school and mm -hmm. also worked to build the archive for the company. So mm -hmm. taking um, probably like a decade's worth of photography and video work and digitizing that and then creating an archive for the company so that they had their whole history on essentially one hard drive. So mm -hmm. um, that was kind of right out of the gate, that opportunity. Um, and then I was, I was kind of hitting the end of that, looking to figure out what was next for me. And I was trying to get some photo assisting opportunities, which are challenging when you have a full-time job. Mm -hmm. 
you have to do it on the weekends. You have to, you know, it doesn't really work with uh, a full-time job. So I, I was doing a little bit on the weekends and then had, when it came time to uh, exit Gibbs, I had some assisting opportunities out of there. And yeah, that's how you, then I, <laughs> I guess this is not a short story by any means. Um, so then I did, yeah, I did automotive work uh, for a while, assisting automotive photographers and then shooting my own work. And then kind of got back into sports, which I hadn't been around since high school mm-hmm. and my whole upbringing. And that was really, I think, where my passion was. But it took me a while to circle back to that. And mm-hmm. um, so right now I'm kind of doing a hybrid of uh, the automotive work with the truck work that I shoot. And then also the sports work, which I've been doing for the last number of years. And tell me when, because I know uh, you shoot a lot of different things. What sports have you been able to cover in your photography career? Like what, I know we mentioned baseball in your bio, but any other sports or athletes that you've gotten a chance to work with? Yeah. um, A lot of the work that I've been doing lately is cycling work. Um, Mm -hmm. I've had a, I loved riding bikes as a kid, but never really got into the sport of cycling. It was more just like riding around for the convenience of it. And um, during my time at CCS, I picked up the bike with a few uh, different students, and that kind of took over for a few years. But then uh, you move to the suburbs where the roads might not be... uh, You know, I was up in Royal Oak where the roads are 45 miles per hour. You're not really... It's not too much fun to ride there. So Mm -hmm. I kind of put the bike away for a while and uh, in the last few years kind of got back to that and then also learned more of the sport side of it. So that's Mm -hmm. been a, that's been a major part. And then I've, I've done a lot of hockey work um, really into, I wanted to play hockey growing up, but didn't uh, have the opportunity to do that. So photography has been my way to get into that sport and see Mm -hmm. it and, kind of put my spin on how I would have visualized it or what I, you know, wanted, how I want to see it. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, yeah, as far as there's been a lot of track and field work lately too. Um, Some of that was um, kind of facilitated by New Balance. They had some opportunities to work with some of their pro uh, track athletes. Mm -hmm. Um, They've just been some great people to work with and, I've continued some of those relationships just because I, I'm very interested in the training part of it and the discipline that goes along with having to work every day for that. Maybe it's a 40 second event you're in mm-hmm. and you're working, you know, four years for this opportunity to go to the Olympics and compete for, you know, a two minute time. And that's, it's um a pretty intense yeah. undertaking to do that so that's been very interesting to get a inside glimpse of that um and yeah so i never even thought stuff. about that insight like <laughs> the fact that these athletes are working for you know this long to do something this short in the as the yeah. goal yeah. I'm, I'm sure that that that's an interesting thing not to just photograph that end result but the the full journey for those those athletes yeah and i think cool. it's um growing up around sports and like wanting to eventually become a pro athlete myself. Like that was the goal for a long time before Mm -hmm. art was really the goal. And I think I had, I was doing art and I was doing sports and I wanted to someday kind of show what that experience was. And um, so that stuff to me is often more exciting than any sort of finish line shot or Um, there's a hundred photographers standing at the finish line, like waiting for that shot. But I think the stories that, um, help get the athlete to that point are equally, if not more interesting to tell. Mm -hmm. I I can imagine that they'd be more interesting, especially nowadays with story being a big part of how not just companies, you know, talk out in the world, but how individuals, how brands like stories are a big part of that. And so, like you said, you're you're getting the the real story, you know, the the, yeah. the full story. That's awesome. Now tell me this: you've worked in industry, like in companies, for companies, and you've worked on your own as a freelance photographer. Currently, are you doing both? One, two? Like, what, what what are you doing on a day to day basis now? Yeah, everything's freelance now. Um, there are repeat clients that I've been working with for a number of years, and then always open to new clients. But um, yeah, everything is based out of my little office in the back of the house and you know 
uh, grab the gear and kind of pack up and go to wherever the work is. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And tell me this, we, we've been talking a lot about this because Alumni Live has only been existing since March. So in the pandemic, how yeah. would you say the pandemic has impacted the realm of photography and the work that you do as a freelance photographer? Um, it's definitely affected heavily for me. A lot of my work is travel. Um, as you know, like I've moved, I was in Detroit for a number of years. I moved to Boston for a number of years. And then a year ago, almost to the month, uh, we moved to Portland. And when you jump around like that, it's hard to maintain local clients. So a lot of my repeat clients have been uh, around the country and it didn't matter where I was. But now with um, the difficulties in traveling or even just, I could travel tomorrow, but I have to gauge like, is the place I'm going to taking it as serious as it is where I am and what can I do to protect myself? So a lot of those clients I'm not necessarily missing out on jobs because a lot of them aren't shooting right now. Um, but I have to be mindful of like, what, what are sort of the circumstances that I'd be willing to undertake to go work mm -hmm. right now. And mm -hmm. I've been very fortunate in that um, one of the, I had a client um, that took me on in I think February, we started working me uh, that's local and they've been able to provide uh, I think at this point, like four opportunities for me, and that's really been helpful. So, I mean, I was I was having like a great start to the year, and then obviously you hit that sort of wall, and you're like, okay, what's going to happen? But I've been fortunate to be able to have met just enough people in that short time here to like be able to kind of keep the wheels rolling. So That's awesome. Now, tell me this, and then we'll move on to talk a little bit about some of the past of your journey, but yeah. prior to the pandemic, you said you traveled a lot. Where are some of the places that you've been able to travel uh, thanks to photography? Um, so a lot of, no mostly North America, mm -hmm. which is uh, pretty fun. I've seen some like very strange corners of America thanks to semi trucks. Um, Volvo has brought me to some places where um, if you needed to park 400 semi trucks, you don't do that in the downtown of a major metropolitan area necessarily, like in some instances you do, but so it's a lot of like hour, you're an hour outside of Oklahoma City or something mm -hmm. like that. And um, so it's towns that I wouldn't have necessarily traveled to otherwise. Mm -hmm. And then also um, with cycling and with uh, automotive work, a lot of times you're going and seeking out some of the most beautiful roads in uh, North America. So, um, you know, I had a long project uh, probably three years ago with Volvo, where we spent three months on the road and we were up in Kananaskis country, which is um, uh, just north of Calgary, about an hour kind of near mm -hmm. Banff and uh, just beautiful. Like it's the Canadian Rockies, these big, wide, perfectly paved roads. Um, and that was really incredible. And then we finished up that job down in Arizona and it was in Northern Arizona, um, an area called Marble Canyon. And it was just, mm -hmm. uh, just beautiful, like two totally opposite ends of the spectrum visually. Um, but yeah, those were, those are pretty spectacular places to work in and to just, uh, travel to. Mm -hmm. I know you sent, uh, one of your photographs of that beautiful winding road. And I was like, where in the world is this? Yeah. You know? Yeah. You get to travel to some very picturesque places. Yeah. All right, Pat. So we're going to get in my imaginary time machine and take yeah. it back um, to high school. So I know you mentioned in high school you were passionate about sports. At what point did art come into the picture for you? Was it something you were always interested in? Did it come into the picture later? Tell me a little bit about when you start to dabble in art. Yeah, definitely. Um, art has always been a big part of my life. Uh, my mm -hmm. father, had, he was working... He was working in a warehouse for a art distribution, mm. uh, an art company, and it's called, the name was Alvin, and you've probably seen it on all the, like, rulers or the, like, all the different stuff in the bookstore. It still says, like, Alvin on it, and he was the warehouse manager there, and a lot of times they would have either, if it was a package that got broken or something like that, he'd bring home, like, whatever markers survived the, uh, <laughs> kind of the fall or something like that, so... Mm -hmm. I was having I was having these like professional level markers in the yeah, house or nice. colored pencils and it might not be the whole set but it'd be a few of them that were gonna head to the dumpster otherwise so there was always like 
premium art materials around mm -hmm. the house. Um, so I got involved with that and, um, and my mom's pretty creative too. Like mm -hmm. she doesn't work in a creative industry, but she's always been doing sewing projects or um, like needlework and knitting. So mm -hmm. it's always just kind of surrounded me in some realm. And then, yeah, in high school, it was kind of a, a moment where I had to figure out what that path was going to, which way I was going to go because mm -hmm. I was looking at some college opportunities where it was you're playing sports and maybe you're not getting like a top tier art education yep. or you're going to CCS and there was no athletics program and you had to decide like do I stop my sports career and do this and that that was kind of a that was probably one of the tougher decisions that I had to make um, mm -hmm. not what made you lean towards the art versus the sports um I think it would at one point, I, I really realized that I wasn't going to be playing at the top tier of the sport. And I, it was a decision that, like, do you play Division Two, And, yeah, you, like, you still have the competitive um, – you still have that competitive environment. You're still playing the sports that you love. But, like, in my eyes, I always wanted to do things at, like, the highest level. Mm -hmm. And for me, I just didn't see that really, like, panning out. Um, mm. And it was just sort of like, okay, I can pivot now and go and uh, pursue at that time automotive design and product yeah. design and and maybe I can hit the like top tier of that. And so that was just sort of that moment where I was like, I'm going to go with this. We'll see how it goes. And uh, yeah, it was <laughs> sometimes it's still when you're like, oh, what if? But yeah, mm -hmm. I'm happy with what I chose. So. I mean, you're killing the game with what you chose. If you talk about wanting to be at the top, yeah. Yeah. you're doing yeah. it. So, and I would so say, too, sorry, just to no, you're finish good. that, um, is that then the opportunity to go and be back around, uh, like, to be around pro sports mm -hmm. and to say, like, okay, my playing career may be over and I didn't achieve that in that realm, but I'm here creatively. Mm -hmm. and I'm, And that, to me, was, like, very much a – kind of goal to get there some way whether it's art or through the sport yeah I always tell students well and I've done a presentation on this like your purpose in life is you know what you love to do what you're good at what you feel the world needs and what you can get paid to do and sometimes there are completely different things that don't seem to relate but they can come together in that purpose right and for you clearly you have a love and have had a love for sports but also you're very talented as a creative person and now you're living in both of those worlds you know, and getting paid to do it, you know? Um, so it sounds like you're you're in alignment with what you're doing. Now tell me this, you said you first were pursuing transportation and product design. So you're in high school, you're interested in art, you had this choice between, you know, art or sports and you chose art and then you applied to CCS. Yeah. Uh, what what happened? Because you're a photographer now. So what happened with the, the transportation and product design aspirations? Um, my, so we had a very, uh, strong art program at my high school and mm -hmm. uh, I think it was my AP art class we had to do like a thesis and pick a subject and I chose sneakers at the time and was doing mm -hmm. all these like sneaker based uh, art projects that weren't like really I think I designed like one Hummer looking shoe or something like that it was pretty awful uh, but like everything else was like how you could take a shoe and make art. So it was mm -hmm. like taking the shoe and putting ink on it and stamping all these like kind of silly exercises with shoes. But um, my mom showed me this catalog. Her friend had a son that was going to CCS and mm -hmm. she showed me the catalog and I saw like automotive design and I mm -hmm. saw like product design for the first time in the pages. And I was like, what is this like world? Uh, like, I didn't really realize those were career options. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of, like, once I saw that, I realized, I saw that that also had, like, a defined career path. Yep. And that, like, you do this, then you, in my in my mind, I thought that you directly go to becoming a designer and you get to design the whole shoe yourself, which I've learned <laughs> isn't necessarily the case. <laughs> yeah, once I, once I had that dream in my head, it was kind of, uh, yeah sold to me there so mm -hmm. so you you applied to ccs for which for industrial design at the time yeah. right because yep. it was both 
Um, yeah. We separate them out since. Yeah. Um, so you came for industrial design and what made you switch majors? Um, I, honestly, I, I was doing photography for fun on mm -hmm. the side and um, just having a little fun with it. And people told me like, oh, you're like pretty good at this. Like, and I, looking back, I think they were, <laughs> they were all lying to me. <laughs> But uh, I appreciate them uh, sending me down this road uh, through blind confidence, maybe. But um, yeah, they, I, I started having fun with it and then um, kind of saw that there was a career path there. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of that came through, which is it's kind of a crazy story. It's 2006, the Super Bowl is coming to Detroit. Um, like Hollywood essentially descends upon a city when mm -hmm. the Super Bowl shows up. So I found out that Barry Sanders and Magic Johnson and all these celebrities were going to be at the African American History Museum a block away from CCX. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I want, like, I've been a Barry Sanders fan my whole life. I want to meet Barry. What's like, how do I get into this private like party that Lincoln is throwing for the Super Bowl? So I wrote this fake, uh, like press request about this like oh I'm with this school newspaper like I want to I want to come like document this happening that's going on in our neighborhood like uh -huh. our school's a block away and thinking like they're gonna read this and be like okay this kid's crazy like uh no way and they sent me back an email like right away like yeah you uh your press pass will be like at the gate you know just come in and I was like what <laughs> uh and so then I wrote a few more I got the uh, I got to go to that party and meet uh, Barry Sanders. And then like two nights later was the Playboy party, which had like uh, Kanye was, the, he was like very new at the time. Uh, maybe not very new because he had, New yeah. newer. Newer, yeah, young Kanye. And then a lot of other celebrities were there. So I thought that this was like the coolest thing, not knowing how hard it is to actually make a career as like a press photographer or mm -hmm. like, not what, what I would want to do for a living. Uh, at this point, but it was a really cool sort of like look into a world that I didn't necessarily feel like I would have access to mm -hmm. otherwise. And um, long story, pretty long still. Um, at that Barry Sanders party, I took a photograph of this woman standing with a Detroit Lions player. And mm -hmm. she sent me her email and or gave me her email real quick. And um, I sent her her photo and she asked me like if I was interested in doing some photography for this automotive magazine that her husband owned. Wow. And, and from there, like, I was like, yeah, sure. I'll like, I ended up interning there um, and getting a lot of opportunities to kind of see photography and automotive photography that kind of came from this chance thing mm -hmm. um, in this crazy story. But it, it put me on the path to eventually like pursuing photography and mm -hmm. Um, switching departments. So. That's an amazing story. I did not know. That. And I would not suggest that you ever write a fake press request because you will definitely get like blacklisted at. Uh, <laughs> but I think a, a cool thing about that story, there's a quote, and I think it's by Jeanette Pierce from Dehive. She said, Detroit is big enough to matter in the world, but small enough where you matter in it. And I think about a student at a school, maybe in New York or California, trying to get away with something like that and probably not getting as far. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Detroit's small enough where yeah. something like that might work. Again, not yeah. that we're encouraging and persuading yeah. students to do that, but yeah. um, I think Detroit's the right environment and scene for creatives to, to push and get you know get into some places yeah. that they may not typically be in absolutely that's so cool yeah. holy pat yeah that was wild <laughs> um tell me this I'm, I'm curious and then i'm going to open it up to um some of the folks on the live here um how did you get a follow of quest love was that after school during school yeah that was um that was afterwards um a woman uh who i met through the car magazine I was at, she mm -hmm. um, she put me in touch with a like former music executive who um, uh, Sabrina Underwood, who put me in a lot of places to shoot music and mm -hmm. to uh, work with a lot of different musicians that she was uh, connected with or had worked with yeah, in the past. And um, my senior thesis was connected to music a lot. It was, a, it was kind of an undertaking to get an understanding of 
Jay Dilla, a famous mm -hmm. music producer from Detroit who had passed away in 2006, I believe. Um, and my thesis was really to try to understand like his importance to the music scene in Detroit and uh, how I could document that in a new and creative way. Um, and yeah, so Sabrina got me into the Rock the Bells show that was happening up in, I can't, uh, I don't know where that concert venue is, like Pine Knob area maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I had an opportunity to just like be backstage and talk to Questlove after the concert and ask him for a couple of photographs and uh, some time. So I've since, yeah, I've been seen him a few more times down the road and at some events and whatnot um, and had a chance to photograph him. But yeah, that's how that came about. Yeah. I was just curious because I'm like, okay, music is now in the scene. It's not just sports and yeah. Um, uh, yeah. advertising. Yeah. yeah. And I think, yeah, it's been a lot of that in my career is kind of figuring out industries that I was interested in and using mm -hmm. photography to like kind of gain access to some of that mm -hmm. a lot of times. And like, hey, I want to learn about this and I have a skill set that I can contribute. So I'm not just like sitting around and like, asking to hang out I'm providing something and um kind of shaping my vision so it's been yeah it's gone the music route it's gone through motorcycle world and hot rod like classic automotive work and then you know kind of figuring out where my kind of creative vision lives so I think it's still a ongoing search it's cool I like the idea of whatever you're interested in you may find a way to access that that industry, yeah. that realm through your, your creative skills. Yeah. All right, Pat. So I'm going to pause on my questions because I, I can ask them all day. Um, yeah. Ask anyone who knows me. Um, I'm going to ask you some questions that were submitted from our folks who are watching live and who submit questions before. Again, if you didn't get a chance to put your question in the question box, now's a good time. Um, so one of the questions that was sent ahead of time was, what do you consider to be your all-time photo achievement in your career thus far? Uh, for me, going back to my high school um, in 2014, I wanted to I wanted to photograph the football program. I had been uh, when my brother played there. Uh, he he graduated high school in '95, uh, so maybe not, from 1993 or '94, I was like the water boy for the football team until I was able to get to high school, and then um played there for years and then have since started like an alumni program there uh, oh, wow. with a few other people and I always wanted to go back and photograph it the way that I saw it as a player and mm -hmm. it took a while to kind of find the time to do that and also to get to a point creatively that I could go back and do that in a way that I felt was like uh polished enough um to be at the level I wanted to be. So in 2014, I went back for two weeks and they were, they just wrapped up their season and they were going into the state playoffs and they ended up like, it's crazy. They ended up winning the first state championship in, high, in the history of the high school and to like have witnessed every single day, every single wow. practice for that period of time was really a incredible experience. And then also to have been involved in the program for so long and then finally see it hit that, like peak there's not like that was such a awesome experience for myself for the players mm -hmm. and then also like my family who's been invested in the program for so long so mm -hmm. I wasn't getting paid uh I wasn't it wasn't for a client but it was like it meant so much to me and then I think that showed in the work because a lot of those images I've been able to uh, put in front of potential clients and that's a lot of the work that has gravitated that uh, clients have gravitated towards. Because so. mm -hmm. that passion was there. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. I think that's, that's powerful. Um, I think that's helpful for students and whoever is tuning in to hear that, like some of the, the highlights of our careers or our achievements aren't the, the things that people put on trophies, right? It's the things that matter most to us. It's the things yeah. that sort of probably got us on the path to begin with. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's powerful. That's awesome. Your high school is lucky to have you. CCS is lucky to have had you. Um, 
All right. So speaking of CCS, um, this question was submitted by another alum, Matt Chung. Um, he asked, can you talk about the amazing friends you met at CCS? <laughs> I knew there'd be some hecklers in there. Um, obviously, Matt's an incredible person. So uh, I know he's back Matt, here too. But, yeah, he's back there. Um, and I know that's not what he was after with this question, but uh, CCS has provided uh, an incredible network. Um, just being, just moving here to Portland, um, being able to go and see so many people at the highest level at Nike, um, whether it's uh, Ashley, who's uh, now the first black female design director at Nike and is yeah. blazing a trail um, for a lot of other designers that'll come after her. Mm -hmm. um, and Ben Nathankum, who um, was a roommate of mine back at CCS, and now he's uh, the lead design on the Kyrie Irving line of uh, Nikes. Wow. Um, and I mean, that's just like two people out of one little window of time at CCS, but mm -hmm. the network is vast. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> there, there, there's so many others. And I sometimes I feel like a cornball, like sharing stories uh about them because it's like i don't know it's kind of like a rah rah but i feel like people need to see that and need to see how much talent comes out of that program and mm -hmm. comes out of the school in general so mm -hmm. yeah. and not to mention you're probably the fifth or sixth alum that i've interviewed now i've not interviewed a ton who also found their spouse at ccs yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. not only do you find friends but you might find yeah. your, your soul baby <laughs> i need to hit the rewind button and add that <laughs> <laughs> yes, Veronica is incredible. Yeah. yeah, hopefully I can get her on a on an interview too because she's doing amazing things. Yeah. Um, all right, so we have some more questions coming in. Was there a moment during school where you felt like giving up, but were glad you didn't? Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, one thing I probably haven't talked on much is after my first year at CCS, I was I was kind of considering what my um, I was looking at other options. I, I didn't mention earlier, I grew up in Connecticut. I'm like 12 hours away from home. Um, CCS is a very small community and it's a very, uh, you show up and you kind of have to know what you want out of art and what you want to do for a living. And it demands a lot of discipline and it demands um, kind of growing up quick uh, mentally to say that I really want to do this as a career. And mm -hmm. so I kind of entertained some ideas of maybe going to schools closer to home. I, I was thinking of maybe looking at Pratt or even RISD was like two hours from my house. And I went, I went to RISD for a little tour that summer and I had an opportunity to kind of look at the product design program there and weigh that against what I had dealt with and witnessed at CCS. And I knew that like the program at CCS is so strong and that the discipline that they're asking and demanding for um, is not a punishment per se. It's not a, it's that they demand uh, professionalism like when you show up and that um, that will only help you in your career. So I think um, at that point, I knew that like, okay, I'm in the right place. This is hard. Uh, the work is hard. The um, lack of a big sports program to root for, those sort of things that like a traditional college experience might provide. Um, as nice as those sound, they don't necessarily push you towards where you want to be at. Mm -hmm. and I, yeah, as much as I was like ready to maybe make a change. I also knew, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be at. So. Mm -hmm. that's, that's helpful perspective and, and insight. Another question that came in is, oops, how was it? How was it rooming with two kids from Miami? I think that's another one of your yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, uh, I really, that was one of the things um, I enjoyed about CCS was the, like the diversity um and like our product design classes had people from all over the world really um and uh i, I say that because i i oftentimes think of like when i first showed up as uh like obviously 
uh, later in my time there. I wasn't in product design, but I know he is. So I knew that, <laughs> uh, where that was coming from. But uh, yeah, it was a, it was very interesting learning that cult, the cultural differences, just being also being in a housing situation where you had to cook for yourself. Mm -hmm. there, was no, there wasn't a meal plan at the time. You had a kitchen and you had to uh, share those experiences. So uh, I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just for those who are watching interest in CCS, we now have a meal plan, but it definitely wasn't <laughs> a thing when, when Pat yeah. and I were first at CCS. Yeah. Um, all right. So, all right. I think those are most of the questions that folks were submitting. And thank you all for asking such awesome questions. So I have a couple more questions for you. And yeah. I know you probably want to get back to your, your amazing work from home life. Mm -hmm. um, so another question for you, Pat, is, um, what is one thing that you learned or gained from CCS that has really impacted your life or shifted the way you think creatively? Besides your wife, we don't count spouses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I had a great professor in the photo department, um, Peggy Day, who mm -hmm. she had worked. Um, she was one of the few women photographers in the automotive advertising world um, during her uh, career. Mm -hmm. And she kind of took me under her wing uh, the year that she was there and showed me like photography at the highest level and the highest level of the craft, um, especially as it pertains to the automotive world. But uh, she also demanded uh, that the work I put out have a purpose and that it's work that I can be proud of. And there was, there was um, a few times after college that, you know, people present ideas to you and say, like, oh, we need a photographer. And, and you see it as an opportunity to, it might not align with you morally, but you kind of start thinking like, well, it's good money. And like, it's an easy job. I have the skill set to do it. And then you say like, am, am I proud of this? Am I, would I put this work in front of my family and be like proud that I did that work? And I think mm -hmm. she was, she like from day one, put that instilled that in me that like the work that I put out, I need to be proud of and it needs yep. to be representative of who I am as a person. Um, and I think that that's definitely been one of the more important uh, lessons that I learned there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's something that's evident in the work that you produce. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think like, and I don't want to get like too deep into it, but it's a, especially important right now where you're, um, you think about the work you're making and you think about the representation, uh, whether it's a, the pose of somebody, whether it's the, um, you don't want to embarrass the person or make the person in the image, um, put them at risk of being like mm -hmm. considered a certain way or, mm -hmm. uh, and there, there will always be uh, people that will have opinions on things, but, as the person who's whether you're directing the shoot or you're you're making those creative decisions that a lot of that responsibility lies on you to protect the message that you're putting out and mm -hmm. I think uh, now it's definitely uh, being brought to the forefront that's powerful I didn't even think about the the role that photographers dps um, art directors have in representation through their work you know I, I know generally like representation matters but um the power that you have as a person making those decisions to influence how people are seeing that's powerful yeah, yeah. and it's it's very important nowadays all right i see some more questions coming in from our audience someone asks um how do you feel the ccs ccs majors translate to different jobs do you feel the skills are flexible um I definitely think the, the work ethic that's required to uh, get out of the door at CCS uh, is something that will always uh, translate to any mm -hmm. career. Um, it was not a, uh, and I was kind of thinking about this last night, it's just like, I don't, I can't think of a long list of uh, people that might have floated through uh, CCS. Like it, it What's demands, that? Yeah, it demands a lot of you and uh, you'll find out, yeah, that the career 
the career will do that too and you'll be thankful um for that so but i've seen um yeah i've seen people make various moves whether they were in the in the crafts department and have found careers in uh the materials and um like materials and finishes world in the automotive industry um and the work ethic there is there and then also just the openness to new ideas that comes along with being on a campus where so much is going on in a small area um, that you really get to see new ideas and see new techniques and kind of find a way to bring that into your own craft, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for, for other examples and insights into what may look like to major in the area and then try different careers, make sure to check out some of the other CCS alumni live because um, as yeah. we talked about with Katie's interview yesterday, it's a journey for many of us. You know, some of us uh, go different paths than our major. Some of us, you know, start the major and end that way. So um, it really depends on the student. But I have seen, you know, like you're saying, Pat, examples of people who, because of their work ethic, because of the environment of CCS, have been able to do all sorts of things. Yeah. Um, here's an interesting question. Being a fr freelancer can be difficult, but what advice would you give to someone on how to say no to work that doesn't align with their goals or interests? I need this help too, Pat. Yeah. Um, I think you have to you know, pr put yourself in a position where you, you can turn that work away. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's kind of like a easy answer. And I know that that's not always, um, it's not always an easy place to be in. There's a, uh, there's, I didn't want to necessarily go the wedding photographer route. I didn't necessarily want to shoot like nightclub photos. Uh, but I found ways to do that where like, whether it was while I was still in school to kind of pay the grocery money for the summer, uh, that I found ways to search, search out work that I could go home at night and be proud of, uh, the images, even if I wasn't necessarily um, stoked about uh, the content of or mm -hmm. like the, what I was shooting. So um, I think another thing I should kind of touch on is that a lot of these things come up when you're like getting a brief for the job and asking questions and making sure that you have a full understanding of what they're looking uh, for from you before you take on the work because I think sometimes you'll be into a project and realize that like oh I don't necessarily mesh with what this product or this um, kind of company is trying to do and then you're kind of in a little too deep where you have to decide to like walk away from it when you've already invested money or time into it so so much of our um kind of field is like really answer ask really asking the questions ahead of time so you can mm -hmm. be in a good spot mm -hmm. amazing advice all right pat we have one final question for you today mm -hmm. knowing what you know now as the amazing traveled experienced uh, photographer that you are now what advice would you give your i don't know 17 or 18 year old self about pursuing your career path I would say that if you, um, I, I really loved what Katie said yesterday about listening to that, that tiny voice that is uh, kind of speaking to you um, and saying like, this is what I, this is what I, I love. Like, why can't I, why not go after that? Mm -hmm. And I think uh, there was a lot of times um, that I, went out on a whim and tried some of those things because it I was like well what if I tried that or what if I wrote this crazy <laughs> letter to somebody to ask to go to a party and like, it changed my life to yeah um send that so I think um yeah definitely listen to those voices that are telling you um that you can follow a creative career path and then mm -hmm. um there's maybe some other practical advice too that I would <laughs> send to What's that one practical advice, piece of advice you would have given to yourself? Um, uh, <laughs> learn about money real fast. <laughs> learn about money because um, I think I learned about it 
later in life and I really wish I would have like stopped to kind of give an understanding of how money worked and how um I mean I'm very fortunate to be have made decisions where I wasn't shooting work I wasn't passionate about simply to like maintain a lifestyle that mm -hmm. uh, maybe wasn't appropriate so I, I've been lucky in that regard but I think understanding money and uh understanding that you can make a living uh doing a creative endeavor and that if you can figure out how to get there it will be one of the most fulfilling careers that you could ever choose so. mm, that's amazing that's amazing yeah. pep you know i love you bye me yeah. down you're one of my favorites i love you <laughs> <laughs> I miss you and Veronica. I'm so glad that I got to chat with you today. Yeah. I want to thank you for the insights that you shared about your journey and um, and just being passionate about the work that you do. You know, where yeah. can people follow you to check out more of your work? Is it online, Instagram? What's your preference? Yeah, um, Instagram is definitely the most up to date, and uh, it's just P Daily Photo, P D A L Y Photo with the P H and uh, that's the most up to date. My website is always a work in construction, but yeah, Instagram's a good spot. But you might have to survive some dog pictures and some uh, photos of the garden. I'm sure people would appreciate <laughs> seeing your human life as well as your work. So you all be sure to follow Pat here on Instagram. I have him tagged in the story to check out his continuous journey as an amazing photographer. Thank you, Pat, so much for your insights. Thank you, everyone who tuned in today. And make sure to tune in next week for another CCS Alumni Live. Thank you awesome. so much, Pat. Thank you so much, Brandy. Talk to you later. Great to you. Bye. Great to see you, too. Bye, everyone.